And now we're back here. We'll delve deeper into the Mugen camps because it was getting more interest. And we're going to show you the areas where we have the clearance. So that in order for the cam lobes or the lobes itself to clear and so that the cams would turn. You see how big that is, right? And of course, we'll talk about the valve cover and how we're going to add the breather system on the valve cover to increase volumetric efficiency. And of course, even better, we'll talk about the black box, the breather block, and we'll do an extensive talk about it. And it's going to be clearing a lot of misconception. Of course, free horsepower for you. First things first, we got the shop page up and running and it's here, it's a new one. We had to redo a new one because the old one is like a ghost town. So we're trying to get as much likes and followers on this. So link will be in the description below. Don't worry about it. And I keep adding almost daily good stuff, like including measurements, tips and tricks on the page. So you guys should visit it and check it out for some good stuff. Okay, now would you look at that? Look at those lobes. Those are massive they're huge right okay now let's put the cam on the head and then show you where it hits and where we're gonna have to grind off to get some clearances for when we use this cam all right okay now we you can see this wait let's get align this all right there let's move the phone closer look yep those lobes hit right and then when you turn it, the other side hits also. So we got to marker this and show you guys where it hits and where it needs to be cleared or clearanced. All right, let's clip it again. All right, now here with the red marker on this section here. And then also here. On this area here, you can actually lower this, like let's say two or three millimeters. That's fine. It's not going to punch a hole or cause any harm but the bottom one where the you know the the floor of the valve train you just need to clear about 0 0.040 or one millimeter and you'll be good so you don't have to worry about punching a hole th that way too and we're going to show you later turn it it's also hitting here yes make another turn oh no wait this one here too sorry sorry all right one more turn is gonna hit on the on the last part here on number four there you go yes we don't want to get it uh way too wide because it's just gonna look weird and look gonna look ugly all right there you go okay now let's turn the head with other cams and show you where we mark it even on the floor, on the cam rail floor or whatever you call that. Sorry. All right, let's turn it. Oh, sorry, sorry. There you can see on this area here, we need an end mill to actually trim off maybe one millimeter. It doesn't have to be too deep. That'll be fine. But the, the, the fence has to be toned down two millimeter. And before we continue the valve cover, hit the like button because that helps the algorithm spread this video to a wider audience. So the more likes, the better. So it's going to get spread out to a wider community. And this way, we're going to be more of us, right? And of course, if you haven't subscribed, subscribing now would be perfect and hit the notification bell. This way, you'll notified whenever we have a new video uploaded and also on this series because, hey, we won't stop until we reach 13 seconds. Of course, you want to be updated on that, right? Okay, now let me get the valve cover. Oops, sorry, sorry. Okay, here it is. The D16A6 or D15B7 valve cover. We're going to put the breather up top here because we can't put it in the floor on the front because the baffle is only at the top. So we'll put one here. And then, and now where, where is it? Another one here. We don't really know how it's going to look, but hey, that's the only option we have. And... Frankly, I don't really mind. So we can put it a bit wider here, but we can actually put it on top here, but it might start hitting the hood for clearance. So we're just going to stick it 
right there where I showed you guys. And that's because look at here under, you see the baffle is just right at the top, not front like a B series. So we can't really put it on the front. Let me show you the factory breather, how small it is, right? So naturally people would add breather on the valve cover. But the problem with that is adding a breather alone may not do anything much because look, this is all the area that it breathes from. So adding more breathers like this is not gonna, you know, it's not gonna alleviate much crank case pressure. So you gotta put more breather holes here or in areas, but now the problem is gonna be, it might start spewing oil, right? So let me show you our solution here, all right? Okay, we gotta drop in the rocker arm set first because when you think about it, the rocker arms are also slinging oil upwards and everywhere. If you imagine running a engine without the valve cover, when you rev it, it's gonna spew oil everywhere, right? So we put the valve cover on and wait, let's center this here. Okay, now what we gonna do is, or what we do is we avoid venting right on top of the rocker arms. Sure, it's just gonna sting some oil, right? But if you go through the first, second, and third gear, even fourth gear, at the end of the run, it's pro probably gonna fill it up. So we avoid that hole that's directly aligned to the rock arms because it's gonna sting oil upwards and in no time, it's gonna fill up the baffle. So yep, that's when you start spewing oil. So we can't do that. So you see where Honda did it, it's where it's safe, all right? So wait. Let's put it here together because I only have two hands, sorry. So what we do is put the vent right on top where the cam caps are. Because if your cam caps move or slings oil, you got bigger problems because that doesn't move. Wait, let me put this here. Let me get a marker to show you guys. All right. Okay, here we are. All we're going to do is align where the cam caps are to the valve cover you know, baffle, you know, here, we marker it so that we know the area or the spot where we can have the holes for the extra breather or, you know, for ventilation. There, all this, all this four spots is actually rather safe because you won't have, you will have minimal oil sling. We just drill a hole as big as this marker pen. You don't have to have it bigger because, hey, that's already addi far additional than the factory. So that's a lot, yes. So this way, this fitting on the breather is gonna work really good. And how many have you guys seen with the extra breather fitting on the valve cover, but not the work under it? So, hey, you know, it's all for show, right? I mean, it's not really breathing much. All right, an interim commercial for now. Somebody commented bef before that the runners of the PO8 is too small and the throttle is not big enough. Maybe so, but we did this 15 years ago. It made 148 wheel horsepower and it ran 14.2 on an EG4 door, pump gas, and full exhaust. So, hey, would we get maybe 150 or 156 on the current one? Maybe so. And here is the dyno sheet again with the proper line. And if you remember, on the previous episode, we calculated the runner length of the Skunk 2 intake and the head. And we got this on the third harmonic is between 7,000 to 8,000, the, the pulse strength of the pulse. So that's really good, right? And so now on the dyno sheet here, we scribe the line on the RPM. And now you tell me if it's going to improve or not. Look at that on the same cam that gave us 148 wheel horsepower on a PO8 ported manifold 15 years ago. And now we're going to use a Skunk 2 Pro series that I ported really well on the same cam, right? So eventually this would be considered a tuned intake manifold for the engine. So when you guys have heard that, the tuned intake, tuned exhaust, this is what it is. They made sure the manifold and the exhaust works on the RPM of what the engine would do or want. Now here, this is a breather box from the B16B because we haven't removed mine, but it's much the same and the same size onto the block. Here you can see the breather hole from the block is big, but going to the manifold is still, it's just small, but with vacuum. So for OEM for our stock application, it's fine. What we plan to do is put two more fitting here or actually anywhere as long as it doesn't hit the other aspects of the engine. Two extra fitting and then connect this PCV valve to each fitting going to the catch can. This way 
you have vacuum when you're driving part throttle and idle from the intake manifold but when you're above 50 percent or full throttle it breathes out to the breather box and i've made a diagram or actually a crude diagram of, of this using this picture and let me show you now this is why it's important to connect this vacuum line to the intake manifold with a pcv working just like this and when you think about it honda knew exactly how it works for their own engine or their own car because from idle all the way to 50 percent throttle you have vacuum and that's probably like what 80 percent of what we do or where we drive every day on our car and this continuously pull vacuum or crankcase builder build up from the block and of course once you exceed valve 50 percent throttle that is also why you have a valve cover breather that goes to the intake pipe because vacuum signal then becomes more significant before the throttle body that's because there's an air filter in the air box so that's the purpose of this two extra fitting that we're going to have welded on the black box at the back this way when you're above 50 percent throttle or full throttle it gets to breathe out into the catch tank or whatever you want to call it the breather box or the yeah overflow catch tank and of course you'll have two extra fittings from the valve cover vending out to the same catch tank this way you have natural effect of breathing out when the crankcase pressure gets too much on the block no vacuum but at least it gets to breathe out right it's not clogged and it's funny because earlier on early days someone commented like all we do is talk about old topics from honda tech and all that and nothing really new yeah sure but if that that means he was also in the forums back then and so what has he done for it now nothing so are you keeping it to yourself just because you didn't get to do anything or achieve anything dude that's funny right we're just sharing because we're trying to share how to understand the system that exists on the engine and even a crankcase this way you get to do how you can actually take advantage of it because you understand the system we're not cheating we're not reinventing the wheel no we're just sharing all this so that you know what to do because hey we know and you can click here because we have an actual video that explains cranky's evacuation even better but actually you know it'll be in the description below so you can just finish this video and enjoy it and watch this right after all right and now here we are we actually just refinished the po8 intake manifold that's ported this is what we're going to test against a stock po8 of course a stock po8 there's nothing else to show for because the plenum is not even cut up but you can see here we have improved on the even the entry all the way to the runners and this is significantly significantly better than the two 2008 intake manifold that we did that made 148 wheel horsepower so hey we know this might do better or you know actually to, to be honest i just hope it makes 148 or 150 wheel horsepower this way when we bolt in the skunk 2 ported intake manifold oh we know it might be near 160 wheel horsepower even more right so that's gonna be fun and that is why we're hoping or we're shooting for 13 seconds because hey the 148 wheel horsepower already did 14.2 on an eg4 door like mine so it's not too shabby right and you can see here the port entry that looks like a velocity stack that is gonna be really good right you can see on this side yes sir and we're actually not gonna port match this to the head this way is gonna be a fair comparison to a stock non-port matched p08 d16 z6 intake manifold to my engine that way is a fair casting or a fair test right and you can actually click here or actually it'll be in the description below because we have a specifically new video that we did for this exact intake manifold we ported it just for you guys so subscribing is definitely a good idea right to keep update and of course like the video this way it spreads out and as soon as the next episode is finished of course you can click it here